Uh, Mr. Chairman, congratulations. I think it's fair to say that uh, you are, and once you're confirmed, will continue to be one of the most powerful people in the world. Um, so I want to begin today, I have some questions, but first, I have a plea. Um, ab above all else, above everything else on your plate, I ask that you please preserve the independence of the Federal Reserve. The last thing that America needs right now is to have the Federal Reserve politicized. It's the last thing the world needs right now. And believe me, the whole world is watching, in, uh, including our enemies. Now, I, I get it. Our politics is polarized. I hope you'll remain um, blissfully ignorant of that. And I'll, I, I get it. I'm not telling you not to listen to elected officials, public officials. Um, I, I, I get it. I mean, I can only speak for the Senate. We have some very smart people in the Senate. They have strong opinions and strong personalities. Uh, we've got a few senators that, uh, to paraphrase Dave Barry, think they ought to make a Hamilton-style musical about their lives. I get all that. Um, but you've got to remain independent. The dollar and political fads come and go, but the dollar doesn't. I hope not. The dollar underpins the entire world economy. Politicize it at your own risk. Let me shift gears. Question. Uh, Professor Keynes, about whom I, I know you know more than I do, but Professor Keynes has seen a resurgence um, in the last few decades in, uh, in his uh, number of followers. And of course, we both know, Professor Keynes said, one way to get out of a recession is to have the government spend money it doesn't have to deficit spend, to stimulate the economy. But Professor Kane said something else that the media doesn't usually quote. He also said, when you get out of the recession, pay the damn money back, didn't he? Didn't he say that? Yeah, I was going to I was going to add that. It was he's, what he said was you should be, it's okay to do deficit spending, but you should be doing surplus, uh, you know, in good times to, to sort yeah. of keep it. Yeah. Now, behind me is a is a chart of our public debt going all the way back to, I think, 1990. You don't have to be Euclid to see that the direction is up. And it's been up under Republican administrations, and it's been up under Democratic administrations. It's been up under Democratic and Republican Senates and, house, and, and, and houses. It's up. So here's my question to you. At what point, how much is, is too much? At what point in your judgment are we going to hit the point where you have to say, no, that's it. We can't do anymore. It's hurting the world. It's hurting our country. So we, we don't know when that is. Um, and as the world's reserve currency, demand for our paper is, is very strong. Uh, if, if, you, if you had shown that and then asked somebody 15 years ago to predict what interest rates would be, they wouldn't be predicting that the, that the 10 year would be at 175. No. Right? So there's there been a lot of demand. But they would have predicted that the debt was going to go up. 
they, they, with, they would have looked at that picture and said, well, you must be experiencing difficulty borrowing, but we're not at all. So now we're on an unsustainable path. Debt is not at an unsustainable level, but the path is unsustainable, meaning it's growing faster than the economy, meaning fully faster than the economy. We have to address that over time. We will address it over time. And the better way to do it is soon and to do it in good times. Start when the economy is strong and the taxes are rolling in. And that's, that's you know, I, since we don't do fiscal policy, but I will say that the sustainability of the debt is, uh, is something we need to get back to and focus on again. Good luck, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, sir.